morning everybody hope you guys having a good start to the week mine is a little bit bumpy but you know I already see again a lot of cars in a place where there usually shouldn't be that many cars so it's gonna be a long ride uh, let's see how much I will talk to you guys uh, again I'm not planning to make this super super long but just warning you that there is something coming uh, let's talk about the leaks I think my overall theme is twofold there are two leaks where I think a championship is more or less decided and there's one that's very exciting but the overarching theme is state of crisis for two big names clubs if not three but um, we'll talk about that um, how shall we do it let's walk through before we go to the state of crisis I think most of you know already what I'm talking about but let's walk through all the leagues that are decided or whatever so um, Liga I actually watched a game that was Lille against Saint-Étienne um, was the first game of the week that I decided to watch and it was interesting because um, there was a point where I thought let's switch to Udine against uh, Juve but I decided now nah, this game is still uh, kind of exciting and it was second against fourth now I think it's second against fifth afterwards a uh, little took an early earlyish lead uh, Bamba, I think was it uh, the little <laughs> strike has a very uh, cool names uh, Bamba I should say took an early lead they should have probably could have made the second one, not that it was that uh, deserved. I think the game was relatively even overall. Um, so got to an early lead. Then um, a penalty was given, which I think was uh, justified. And the former Santa Tien. Uh, nah, that was the other bomber. Uh, uh, in, in, in any case, uh, the little goalkeeper seemingly is this penalty killer. No, he didn't save that one, so it was 1 1. Um, and then I think the big player for Lille Font went off, but uh, fortunately for them, right after halftime, Bamba makes his second. Uh, what was a really nice strike uh, from a distance. And then Lille seemed mostly in control of the game. Uh, and I think 10 minutes to go, so they made it 3 1, and that decided that. Um, at that point, I, I said always, if there will be a 3 3 1, I'm gonna go to Udine against Juve. And yeah, it was kind of late, but I actually enjoyed that game. I didn't enjoy that the stadium was only the lower ranks were filled, but I guess that's the reality in the French league. Uh, I think it was tricks. Let me just the camera slightly. Uh, you cannot feel every time the stadium but uh, this was kind of a big game for them i think the problem in france is of course that paris Saint Germain is so dominant i mean they yesterday beat lyon by five nothing uh, i just saw this morning the highlights um neymar with the penalty i honestly don't know what i don't like how neymar or uh, all those players with their kind of delayed uh, run-ins how they do it, I know. Meanwhile, everyone knows how Neymar shoots a penalty, but it's such a celebration uh, of making the shot. And I don't know what's the point. I really would like that they just you make one, two, three, and then you shoot. I think that's probably the rule they should make something like that. I'm a little bit bothered. Uh, okay, today I'm a little bit bothered about a few things. Uh, and Neymar is surely one of the things. Uh, Neymar usually. Me. There is this. Yes, his skill is extraordinary. I can enjoy it if he does well, but I. It's almost like a young Ronaldo where his antics are overshadowing the greatness that he has. I think. And I honestly think he is not the third best player anymore. Maybe skill level wise, yes, but I think uh, even on his own team, there is a better player up there. Mbappe. Speaking of Mbappe, 
uh, after you know uh, Paris Saint Germain a player got sent off in the second half, and then a stupid yellow red. Lyon had two chances. One was actually um, Thiago Silva put the ball right at the Lyon defender who shot it on the post in the right and uh, opposite direction. Uh, the attack is going and Opape hits the post. Well, also the last time he hit the, uh, the, the post because he made uh, four more goals <laughs> in one half. You know, Lyon is maybe not the best team in France this year, but they are going. They are so are certainly one of the stronger ones. And being annihilated by Paris Saint Germain is just, yeah, it tells you everything you need to know about the league. Nine, nine uh, games, nine wins for Paris Saint Germain, and I think we can hand them the French Championship. Um, I honestly think it doesn't do them well for the Champions League. They are not playing against competition, and I'm not saying that the French teams are weak. I don't think that the French league per se is weak. It's just that there's one team so ahead of everyone else that it's a championship for second place, more or less. And you know, if I, most French people uh, would say in, in any way France without Paris would be better, and then you have Monaco, so yeah, take those two out. But Monaco is anyway uh, kind of a non factor this year as well. So yeah, there you go. Um, four goals from Pape. That's a great mix, a great achievement, not mix. Uh, I also have to say that uh, having the uh, having uh, both teams reduced to 10 men probably opened up a lot of spaces and it's uh, that's the only thing interest if all the offensive weapons of Paris Saint-Germain are on the pitch. Um, it was also interesting in Pape after he made two, I think he wanted to uh, assist Neymar with the third, but Neymar made a little bit of a mess out of it and then he shot the goal himself. Um, I'm really interested to see if Paris Saint-Germain can do anything in the Champions League this year. Um, I have some doubts about their defensive prowess uh, that you need. Offensively, they probably have one of the best striking cores. I think they and Barcelona, and they probably will play each other at one point, uh, probably have the best attacking attack in Europe. Uh, we, don't need to talk, we don't need to discuss much about that. So yeah, that is the French League, all that I saw. Let's go to Italy. It's the other championship that's more or less decided. Uh, you were, I think, eight, eight out of eight. Uh, completely dominated um, um, Udine, which I was a little bit surprised because for me Udine, you know, as a Milan fan, Udine is the team where they always have a hard time. Uh, always uh, pesky opponent. Well, I'm actually, you know, I actually uh, enjoy Udine. I'm actually quite in their favor, but uh, you know, Milan is my first love there. Love there. So yeah, uh, that's why. Udine is kind of this opponent that I always, when it comes up, I always know. It doesn't matter whether in the Friuli or at home. Udine is always a tough opponent. And no, they were not. I like the Udine shirts actually quite some. I didn't like what Juventus was playing in, in the away kit. This color matchup, I think it made uh, the only sense it made is that all the other Juve kits do not provide the sufficient counters that is needed. But the white and black and black pants against this beige. What a boring matchup. Uh, color wise, and I, and I was happy because the Lille against Sass at the end, there was the red and the blue of Lille against the dark green with white pants of Saint Etienne. I, the Saint Etienne jerseys look weird to me. I like the style, I just don't like that you have to emphasize all this, uh, everything around the collar. And the green, I think, should be a little bit more vibrant. But to watch, much better than this game. Um, and yeah, I think it was uh, 
the first goal. Betancourt made the first goal and then uh, yeah, <laughs> it was kind of funny because if you see the goal, there was the cross in and Ronaldo was ready to shoot it, but Betancourt of course uh, got there first and made the one nothing. Um, and you could see that Ronaldo for a second and then now we are celebrating. It's actually kind of nice to see that he so quickly goes, yes, let's celebrate with the, the teammate and then a little bit later he got his goal. Uh, and yeah, if you leave Ronaldo with that much space alone in the box, even if you think the ball is not coming to him, the ball will eventually find its way to him and that's where he made the second goal. Udin, I think, had in the beginning of second half a chance to make something, but they didn't of course take it and then you uh, never looked back. So yeah. Juventus is ahead. I saw uh, Roma against Empoli. Where Roma, you know, it was not an easy win, especially. I mean, they got the uh, lead through Nzonzi, which was kind of a weird goal because when you look at free from the back camera, yes, Nzonzi makes the touch, but he didn't deflect the direction. He just bumped, bumped it up a little bit in a way. It was kind of weird, but yeah, Nzonzi, tallest player on the pitch, got the lead. Um, and then Roma actually started defending more and Empoli you know they already get against Milan out of nowhere they made the 1-1 it didn't happen this time because Dzeko made his second goal at the, but it was late in the game where he sealed the deal for Roma it was not that Roma looked uh, in danger of giving up the lead but um, you could sense that with some luck their way it could well be um, one one game as well. well Empoli is uh, as the opponent as well. well they, got, they got points of Milan, so you see where, where I'm bleeding. Uh, speaking of Milan, uh, that was the game that I was watching pro probably closest uh, this weekend. Oh, it's Milan games usually now that they won. I think I'm a little bit more on board. They won against Olympiacos and they, I was hoping that they put a few past Kevo. We're sitting now at minus one points. I don't know where this happened that they uh, got points deduction. But of course that stinks and you could see that uh, there was not much fight in Kevo, unfortunately. And yeah, Milan dominated the first half, uh, should have taken a early chance, but once Higuain made the 1 0, and then seven minutes later the 2 0, uh, the game was done and dusted. Uh, well, very happy to see Higuain scoring. Um, this is the thing that Milan needs, and that's pro probably the one thing that they were lacking in the past years that they didn't have a striker who makes those vital goals against lesser opponents. Um, now they have this and I'm very happy to see, of course, Milan won't be Milan at the moment, they always are. No matter against whom they're giving up goals. Uh, Bonaventura made it 3-0, uh, but this was a multiple deflected shot. Suso played a really great game again. I mean, Suso is hitting peak form. And then the, I was very happy about that. Yes, we have a good player, we have a good player. And then... Um, the commentator reminded me, yeah, if he plays so well, he might be transferred in winter. And I'm thinking, no, why? Why do you need to spoil it for me? But yeah, that's the reality at the moment. Uh, there are teams that are looking for a left side player. And they mentioned Bayern, Real Madrid and whatever. I hope not. I hope Sousa stays because he really, he really, really, really uh, is an asset for Milan at the moment. I think he made overall, you can say, three assists, although the Bonaventura goal. Almost seemed a little bit unassisted, but okay. Three assists for Suso. He could have made another shot. And you know, I was hoping that Milan puts now like four or five, make it make it count, you know, make make a little a little bit of off statement. Usually I would turn off the game after three nothing or so, but um it was um when I wanted Milan for Milan I can watch this. Uh, if I'm neutral, I want to see my tired game. So, yeah. That was some accident there, so that's why we had a little bit of a traffic halt. 
Ja, Mila is Mila, they gave up a goal uh, at half time. Uh, Romagnoli was injured, I think, or out. And I still have to see Caldara. I guess he's also injured. It sucks a little bit, because that was the big other acquisition. Uh, so the central defense was not the one that they usually play. And Zapata gifts the goal to Pelissier, makes it 3 1, but there was never, never, never uh, any talk of any comeback. I never felt there was a fight in Empoli. They may have had some more chances, but there was never much more fight in Empoli. Uh, Empoli, uh, Kevo, as uh, some idiot very close to me behind. Yeah, 3-1 win, very happy about that, uh, 3 points, and if uh, we get the 3 points against Genoa, Milan gets the 3 points against Genoa, then they look actually quite pretty. Uh, the other game that I probably would have watched if it wasn't Milan the same, same that was Lazio, Fiorentina, well, Lazio, nothing, I saw that Inter won, but yeah, the Serie A, unfortunately, is decided, I think uh, Napoli won against the Solo. There you go, I think Napoli, Inter and will be behind and I hope that Milan makes it into. I will, yeah. Bundesliga, yeah, first of all, Super Bundesliga, last close, completely unnecessary in Innsbruck. That was a damn uh, killer of my weekend, a little bit. It happened at the same time as the Milan games, so it was kind of this hot and cold, hot and cold. But uh, German Bundesliga, um, while I was watching the Juve game, they said, uh, if you want to see crazy stuff, watch the highlights of Dortmund Augsburg. So I saw the Juve game is going to go where I had to watch this one. Yes, it was crazy. Augsburg, I think, took the lead twice uh, early in the first half as well. And then, uh, no, in the first half, it was 1 0 Augsburg. Then uh, it was 2 1 Augsburg right after. Arcazier equalized for uh, Dortmund. Um, Dortmund got another equalized through Alcacer, which I so saw Alcacer the first one I think was a penalty, then a wonderful free kick. 2-2, um, they made it, then I think this was in the 80th, 3-2 in the 80th minute. I think this was Götze, his brother plays at Augsburg. Um, then, uh, in the 90th minute, Augsburg equalizes, uh, shortly before, equalizes through Gregoric, uh, make it 3-3, and Alcacer scores the winning goal in the 96th or 97th minute. Uh, crazy game. So I thought, yeah, this is the big uh, headline from the Bundesliga. Dortmund was about to give up the top position, and no, that was not it. Uh, I had to see the headline where it said that uh, Bayern lost to Gladbach and they lost in 60 minutes in, it was 2-0 for Gladbach. yes, two luck, lucky strikes, there was nothing coming from Bayern, uh, even when they scored the goal against Lewandowski, which was a very, very, very close offside call. Uh, from what I saw on TV, I would have given the offside, honestly, uh, but that basically killed Bayern. Uh, they made even a third one and losing 3 0 at home to Mönchengladbach. Gladbach. That's, uh, that's a big one in addition for Austria. Alaba is injured, uh, will not play now in the Nations League, uh, which is another thing that I'm not too excited about. But yeah, gotta take it as they come. Um, Funnily enough, although Alaba is probably by far our best player, I think we sometimes we can compensate for Alaba missing. Not that oh it's not that not that bad of news. So yeah, but Bayern is a state of crisis. I mean the one one against Augsburg, that was kind of the surprising uh result. Then uh Champions League won one, then they lost uh I think to Hertha. I'm not sure. I mean, uh, if it was um, 10 years ago, I think um, Niko Kovac would already be looking at a really, really tough spot, a spell. I'm not sure if they say, well, he's a new coach and we need to do some rebuilding. Maybe uh, we give him some leeway. Uh, 
but honestly this is a spell for Bayern that is at least of late unheard of um, and I don't want to pull it again down to the coach but of course the coach is the one that will bear the consequences sooner or later if the Bayern officials think yeah this is not going the way we want it to go yeah but Bayern is in, is in a state of crisis I would say uh, they're not only fifth four points off the pace but it's so interesting because just it seems like two weeks ago if not maybe three I said well that championship go is going uh, one way and no it's not and that leads me to the other team that I find in a state of crisis which is Real Madrid which is even more staggering they haven't scored in four games uh, they lost to Alaves and that's game I saw the second half it was comically. I mean, Real Madrid controlled the game, but without being threatening. And that's usually usual not, not a good sign. And um, I said earlier, two or three weeks ago, that Real Madrid seems liberated from the Ronaldo, that everyone can shine. Um, no, there's no one is shining at the moment. Uh, I think they're all in such a fragile state. You can see that there is a lot of quality in that squad and they probably should uh, dispose of such opponents with relative ease. But no, you could see that they are hampered. I mean, uh, probably the Isco not playing or not not playing a role. Asensio did not do much. Bale, uh, who looked like totally liberated and taking it over. No, Bale was a no-show. Uh, the only Modric that did a little bit. I even think that Gross Probably it's his time to leave Real Madrid. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it didn't look good and it was a 0-0 game, which is already um, a little bit of a disappointment in itself. But then a corner, and you could see they were going to stand. They get a corner kick in the 93rd minute. Yeah, let's kick, yeah, let's kick. You saw the fans. Yes, one more, one more. And Sure enough, they make it a corner kick in, a horrible defending. And Courtois is going everywhere except for the ball, completely flying through the penalty area, totally un unmotivated. And the uh, ball goes to the net, and there's only Ramos in goal, uh, who has no chance. And Alaves scores the winner. Uh, comically. Comically. The other thing that I found comically with the Alaves, with Alaves was that the jersey uh, the jersey looked all right uh, it's just that on the pants they had the orange spots on blue pants and if, if there were uh, players that had the shirt out uh, and bent a little, little a little bit over this sponsor was then really showed like they're showing the but but yeah so Real Madrid going down I saw Atleti one, winning one nothing against Betis I love those Betis third kit honestly uh, that they played in yesterday uh, so Atleti uh, uh, is now ahead of Real Madrid Barcelona also only managed a 1-1 draw against Valencia which was a little bit lucky I mean the strike by Messi to make it 1-1 um, was a really good strike but I didn't expect them to lose to not win against Valencia since Valencia was also didn't have a good start to the season, but Valencia seemed motivated, got a very early goal, second minute, and then had many, many chances, although uh, Barcelona dominated possession. So yeah, Barcelona won one, and who is now in the lead? Sevilla, thanks to Andres Silva. And I told you last week that I really wanted Milan to keep Andres Silva, because I really thought that Andres Silva can do something. Yes, he can do a lot and he's scoring uh, goals, maybe it's easier to score goals in Spain, we'll see. So yeah, the Spanish league has some excitement and it would be great if, I think Barcelona, I don't want to pronounce a state of crisis because uh, it's clear to me, Barcelona is putting all, everything into the Champions League. Barcelona's main goal this year is winning the Champions League and you can see it in them not playing Messi at times, so yeah. Not quite yet ready to pronounce uh, a 
prices in Barcelona, although I have to say that uh, for Barcelona, similar as to Paris Saint-Germain, I don't trust their defense. Uh, just don't. And then what's left is England, and that I, will, I, I was thinking that I will talk a lot about the biggest game. The biggest game of the weekend, without doubt, was Liverpool against Manchester City. Uh, we had Chelsea winning against Southampton, uh, 3-0. Morata scored, although he uh, lost the chance. But you know, this was one of those those games where you see, you think the playing field is level, and the bigger team scores the goals, and the uh, smaller doesn't. Similar to Arsenal against Karabakh earlier this week. By the way, I forgot uh, about to mention Sevilla lost to Krasnodar, and you know, all, all I forgot quite some games that I actually watched the highlights. But the Europa League is just too many games. But there is nothing to say about Manchester City and Liverpool, except that in the first half, Manchester City had a little bit more control, but it was a tactical battle all the way through. Second half, I thought Liverpool suddenly tried to do more, uh, but the biggest chance, of course, Manchester City uh, getting a penalty. And Mares took the, I think it, um, Jesus wanted to score it, but Mares, Mare, Mares. Uh, I want to say Mare, but not Fernandez. Uh, whatever, let's call it Mares. Uh, well, it was, uh took the ball, and you could see he actually had missed three or whatever. So I didn't quite understand why. Don't don't they have better penalty shooters? And he shoots it over the bar. I mean, he did what I think is the best thing to do: shoot it high. Uh, but yeah, a little bit too high went over the bar and the nicer thing was the replay uh, because it was right the goal is to the left of his well, where all the Manchester City fans to the right where, else, where the Liverpool fans and you could see first the Man City fans with hands up no down and the Liverpool fans celebrating uh, there were a few situations where I thought that Mohamed Salah last year would have made a goal there was one CSC situation where he was clear and he shoots, and yeah, the, the, uh, this was the other one. Klopp, you could see his reaction. He shoots, and I think the goalkeeper makes a relatively easy save. And Klopp is first going, ah, and then immediately, bravo, 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 bravo. Uh, kind of getting and get going. But yeah, uh, it's a um, zero, nil, nil draw, and there's really not much to say except that I like to mention the city and my shirts. <laughs> but that was a highly unremarkable. I really expected more of that game, but this was a tactical battle and not much else there. So, yeah. Uh, should have probably switched over to Napoli Sassuolo, which I did for 10 minutes, but uh, I really wanted to see that Manchester City and Liverpool get something going. But yeah, now it's a three way race. Uh, we have Manchester City still on top, I think Chelsea second, Liverpool is third, but they're all 20 points. So that's a championship to watch. Arsenal, for surprisingly, is also a little bit in the conversation. But yeah, I'm at work. We talked about all the leagues that I watched, minus the Austrian league. Let me know what you watched, what you thought about games, which games I missed. I didn't see Arsenal, for instance, um, or uh, um, whether there's anything else you would like to add. Uh, let me know about the teams in crisis. I think Real Madrid and Bayern, Bayern there's... Latest in November, I think there might be a coaching change. Not that I'm in favor of it, but it doesn't look good for those two. And yeah, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye.